Okay, so for those of you who watched my last video that I made um, on the 23rd, I said I wasn't going to make another video until after Christmas. And then and more it sat with me for the rest of the day. I said, you know what? Going into Christmas, I can't go out talking about something negative. You know, there's a lot of negative things that are going on in the world around us today. A lot of, you know, issues um, with the news and things of that nature. But... I think we just need to remember that there is actually good things that, that, that really do take place out there in a sea of negativity and divisiveness. So I'm going to be posting a link, okay, to a you know website that has multiple articles on it. I just picked this one because I thought that this one actually, you know, had some real significance. Um, and I thought it was a really good story, but that is by no means saying that any of the rest of these news articles that you can find on this website are not truly good stories. And I would encourage everyone to go read, you know, through these articles. I think it would really help brighten people's moods up when they see all this negative coverage of things going on. And it's not that I'm saying we shouldn't be talking about these issues. The issues I report on are things that I think do need to be expressed. But every now and then, it's good to just take a step back and look at the good things that are still taking place in society. Because I think when we see all this arguing, when we see all this negativity, when we see all this divisiveness, it starts to really give the impression people just can't get along anymore. And I think that, unfortunately, when you read things like this, it still gives you that ray of hope that there is hope that people can coexist and get along and so I think things like this really should be reported on just as much. Unfortunately, these are not things that tend to make many headlines, especially on mainstream media. And of course, that's where people like myself end up reporting most of the time is calling out things in the mainstream media, the falsehoods and their false narratives. So with that being said, I want to take a look at, an, at a news article here. And again, if you want to read some of the other stories, I will be posting a link to the website where you can find this story and many others in the comment or in the description below. So you can click on that link and it'll take you right to it if you want to read some more of these stories. But let's just jump straight on into this one and we'll discuss. Okay, article here. Christmas came early for the children living in these low-income neighborhoods and housing complexes. That's because a former resident of the area returned to the streets where he grew up so he could hand out more than $12,000 worth of toys to the local children earlier this week. Adam Armstrong grew up poor in a mostly government-subsidized apartment complex in Harrisonburg, Virginia. When he was just 18 years old, he was sent to jail to serve a three-month sentence for marijuana possession. By the time he was released, he knew that it was time to turn his life around. Armstrong, who is now a father of a three-year-old girl, ended up moving to Baltimore and working a string of different jobs until he finally got into the mortgaging business. As Armstrong became more and more financially comfortable, he felt more and more compelled to give back to people living in poverty. So he began donating heaps of toys to local charities every holiday season. This week, the 35-year-old th philanthropist drove to his former neighborhood in a 26-foot moving truck packed with 1,327 toys to give away to all of the children. Sarah Lewis Weeks, the property manager of the complex, says that Armstrong had approached her about the giveaway last week. She had been wary of his intentions. Quote, he comes into my office and says, what are you doing on Saturday? I'd like to give away lots of toys. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. End quote. Lewis Weeks recounted, to NBC News, quote, I am very skeptical at that point, end quote. To her astonishment, however, Armstrong made good on his promise. It was like stuffed animals he was giving away, it wasn't like stuffed animals, rather. He was giving away bikes, remote-controlled cars, real Barbie dolls, not dollar store Barbie dolls, says Weeks. He didn't miss anybody. His heart was truly in this. They thought it was going to be a couple of stuffed animals, 
not and you get a bike and you get a bike and you get a bike like an Oprah for little kids, she added. Armstrong simply told the Washington Post that he was happy to bring joy to little kids for the holiday season. Quote, the kids were so innocent and sweet, end quote, Armstrong told the news outlet. Quote, you can't put a price on looking at these kids' happy faces. Some of them have nothing. And to be able to give them a small toy, the reward and pleasure was all mine, end quote. Now, while we're at it, let's just go ahead and jump on into this one as well. Here's another story. I, I think I may just go through a few of these. This is about a woman who, re a single mom who received a car after getting into, a, I believe it was an accident. Let let's just read through this here. A woman near Fort Worth, Texas was surprised with a new car nominated to receive a Christmas wish because she always manages to stay friendly and kind despite her valiant struggles as a single mom. And I think we can all agree single moms definitely have a lot of hard struggles out there. That, that That's nothing to be taken lightly, and that's certainly no, no joke. Single moms have it real rough out there, and they should get a lot of respect for what they have to do. Bridget works at a Chick-fil-A in Benbrook, Texas, and anyone who visits the restaurant knows her by her infectious optimism. She brings smiles to local residents every day, knows their names and faces as well as their orders. She is never shy to give out hugs, hold babies for tired mothers, and everything in between. So when her car was totaled, it was no surprise that her friends wanted to do everything they could for her. One of those friends was Amy. She wrote a letter to 94.9 KLTY in the Dallas-Fort Worth area explaining Bridget's situation and the dire circumstances she was under on top of her car being totaled. Bridget's son had been admitted to the hospital. A new car seemed completely out of reach. Quote, with my kids, it's not can we go to Chick-fil-A, it's can we go see Bridget? So I just felt led, like someone needs to know about this, said Amy. She's so deserving. She nominated Bridget for KLTY's Christmas Wish Program, and station reporter Bonnie Curry called Dane Miner of Freeman Toyota, who coincidentally had been praying to find the perfect person to give a new car to. Together, Dane and Bonnie pulled up to the Chick-fil-A drive through window to receive their order from a smiling, gracious Bridget. As she handed them their drinks and food, Dan explained they would, that they had a surprise for her. Bridget broke down in tears as her co-workers led her outside and Dane handed over the keys and 94.9 KLTY shared another surprise, $2,000 to get Bridget caught up in bills and groceries. Okay, so I'm going to go through one more here, and then we'll discuss the, the overall takeaway from what I want people to really think about going into the holiday season here. One family's loss has sparked a movement to bring light into others' lives via makeshift Christmas tree farm. A man named Mark suffered every single parent's worst nightmare after he lost his daughter Mary Beth at age seven. She had spent the majority of her life in surgery receiving medical procedures to correct severe heart defects. While being treated at Children's of Alabama Hospital in Birmingham, Mark said that it was painful for them to spend the holidays without her in their home. So they would often bring Christmas to her. After she passed, he wanted to make sure no other parents or children had to miss holidays together. So as an Ace Hardware employee, he and his colleagues made it happen. Mark reached out to several nearby Ace Hardware stores, and the businesses immediately committed to help. They received donations of 285 trees from 25 store owners, to create a makeshift tree farm at the hospital for kids. And last week, the dream became a reality. Each child chose their own tree, 
decorated it with ornaments, and met Santa himself amongst twinkly lights and artificial snow. For those unable to leave their rooms, Christmas was brought direct to them so they didn't miss out on the excitement. So, I mean, wow, those are some really, you know, inspirational and touching news stories to show what people try and do for each other to spread a little bit of holiday cheer, I guess you could say, you know, and really, you know, brighten others up. You know, instead of just doing things for themselves, try, trying to do things to make someone else's life happy going into the holiday season. So, true, true, great stories, you know, great, great inspiration. And I think that each of us could take something away from that. And that is trying, I know we're going to have a lot of things coming up, you know, family time and whatnot, but think about a lot of those out there who may not have the, you know, the time that you're possibly going to be having with your family over the holidays. You know, some people don't have anyone around. Uh, possibly people you know may even be struggling. You know what I mean? May, may just barely be scraping to make ends meet. Maybe that maybe you know that single mom who has multiple kids that she's trying to take care of this holiday season and, and is really struggling to get by. You know what I mean? May, may, maybe you know some kid that you know that's in a children's hospital you know that is not going to get to celebrate christmas like everyone else or maybe you know some families that just live in, in poverty in general can't really afford to buy their you know kids many clothes for christmas much less toys for christmas and so if there's anything that you know or, or even just someone you know that may not have family around maybe there's an old person you know in, in the neighborhood you know maybe family doesn't come around to see them that often things of that nature it's sometimes you don't even have to do something as big as some of what we saw in these articles sometimes it's just doing something simple putting a christmas card in someone's mailbox you know going by just to wish them merry christmas spread some of that around you know or, or happy holidays you know or whatever spread some of that you know you know uh, happiness and joy around you know, and, and it, I think it really goes a long way and can really touch people in many ways. But definitely, I mean, if, if you're able to and you know someone that's down on their luck or just having a hard time, you know, a kid that might not be able to get me things for Christmas. Or if you're near, a, you got a children's hospital near, you know, and you can afford to go out and buy some simple toys, some stuffed animals, whatever it might be that you can afford to go and do. Or like I said, if you know someone, just even a simple Christmas card saying, you know, hey, you know that there's some of us out there who, who think about you and we just want you to have, you know, a, a happy holiday and a good Merry Christmas and whatnot. And I think that really goes a long ways. And, and it's things like that that unify people where you don't care what color someone is. You don't care what gender someone is. All you care about is the fact that that's another human being out there and you're spreading some holiday joy around. And I think that's really, you know, re really great inspiration for the rest of us to not only think about ourselves this holiday season, but for those who might not have the sort of, you know, holiday that we're going to have. And so to bring that joy to other people, I don't know about any of you, but to me, that's something that really would, would, would touch me in a, in, a, in a deep, deep way. And so I encourage everyone out there, if you're able to and you know anyone who needs it, spread that holiday joy around and show some love and compassion for your fellow man. That's going to go a long way. Um, and it gives me, you know, a, a nice warm feeling to know that I've done that for someone. I'm, you know, I, I'm involved in things outside of YouTube, outside of my job. We do a lot of charity work um, and we take up for a, a homeless shelter for veterans. Okay, we also do a lot of fundraisers and donate to the Shriners Children's Hospitals. You know, so I, I do a lot of that stuff, you know, in, in, in my spare time. Um, it's something that I'm very adamant about. Uh, veterans is another thing that I'm adamant about. So, and, and then there's some veterans out there, you know, homeless veterans, things like that. If you know a homeless vet, help them out, you know, just, just, just a little something. It doesn't have to be something big. It really doesn't. It's just the small things to let someone know that you're thinking about them or that you care about them. And it will touch them very deeply and it will let them know that in a world with all this division, there's still that hope out there, that there's still kind people out there, and there are people out there who actually care. And that 
would make their entire holiday season a thousand times better. And if you were able to help someone in that way, are you telling me that you wouldn't be just as touched inside to know that you could have brightened someone's holiday up that much by doing something so simple? Just some food for thought. I thought I would share these stories and go into the holidays on a good note, spreading a positive message around, and I hope everyone can take something away from this, and I hope everyone who watches this video has a happy holidays and Merry Christmas.